Hi Ridgeway pupils, hope you're all well. We're missing you and hope you're managing to keep yourselves busy. Today I thought I'd like to share a story with you. Paddington Bear by Michael Bond. Paddington's my favourite bear. I'm sure you've got a favourite toy as well. Paddington Bear. Mr and Mrs Brown met Paddington on a railway platform. In fact, that was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear, because Paddington was the name of the station. The Browns were waiting to meet their daughter Judy when Mr Brown noticed something small and furry half hidden behind some bicycles. There he is. It looks like a bear, he said. Bear, repeated Mrs Brown, in Paddington Station. Don't be silly, Henry, there can't be. But Mr Brown was right. It was sitting on an old leather suitcase marked Wanted on Voyage. And as they drew near, it stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said. May I help you? That's very kind of you, said Mr Brown. But as a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. You are a very small bear to be alone in a station, said Mrs Brown. Where are you from? The bear looked around carefully, replying, Dark is Peru. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. mean to say you've come all the way from South America by yourself, exclaimed Mrs Brown. Whatever did you do for food? Unlocking the suitcase with a small key, the bear took out an almost empty jar of marmalade. I ate marmalade, it said. Bears like marmalade. Mrs Brown took a closer look at the label around the bear's neck. It said, quite simply, please look after this bear, thank you. Oh, Henry, she cried, we can't just leave him here. There's no knowing what might happen to him. Can't we go home and can't he come home and stay with us? Stay with us, repeated Mr Brown nervously. He looked down at the bear. Uh, would you like that, he asked. That is, he added hastily, if you have nothing else planned. Oh yes, replied the bear, I would like that very much. I know I've nowhere to go and everyone seems to be in such a hurry. That settles it, said Mrs Brown. Now you must be thirsty after your journey. Mr Brown will buy you a nice cup of tea while I go and meet our daughter Judy. But Mary, said Mr Brown, we don't even know his name. Mrs Brown thought for a moment. I know, she said. We can call him Paddington after the station. Paddington. The bear tested it several times to make sure. Paddington. Paddington. It sounds very important. Mr Brown tried it out next. Follow me, Paddington, he said. I'll take you to the restaurant. Paddington had never been inside a restaurant before and he was very excited when he saw what Mr Brown had bought him. He was so hungry and thirsty he didn't know which to eat first. I think I'll try both at the same time if you don't mind, he announced. Without waiting for a reply, he jumped up onto the table and promptly stepped on a large cream and jam cake. Mr Brown stared out of the window pretending he had... He had tea with a bear in the station every day of his life. Henry, cried Mrs Brown when she arrived with Judy. What are you doing to that poor bear? He's covered in jam and cream. Paddington jumped up to raise his hat and in his haste he slipped on a patch of strawberry jam and fell over backwards into his cup of tea. I think we'd better go before anything else happens, said Mr Brown. Judy took hold of Paddington's paw. Come along, she said. We'll take you home and you can meet Mrs Bird and my brother Jonathan. 
Mr Brown led the way to a waiting taxi. Number 32, Winter Gardens, please, he said. The driver stared at Paddington. Bears is extra. Sticky bears is twice as much. And make sure none of it comes off on my interior. It was clean when I set out this morning. The Browns climbed into the back of the taxi and Paddington stood on a little tip-up seat behind the driver so that he could see where they were going. The sun was shining and they drove out of the station and there were cars and big red buses everywhere. Paddington waved to some people waiting at a bus stop and several of them waved back. One man even raised his hat. It was all very friendly. Paddington tapped the taxi driver on the shoulder. It isn't a bit like deepest, darkest Peru, he announced. The man jumped at the sound of Paddington's voice. Cream, he said bitterly, all over me new coat. There was a bang as he slid the little window behind him shut. Oh dear, Henry, murmured Mrs Brown. I wonder if we're doing the right thing. Fortunately, before anyone had time to answer, they arrived at Windsor Gardens. Judy helped Paddington out of the taxi.